lots of things that cause, I suppose, trauma or wounds inside. <clears throat> and I think to function comfortably in the world, I had to put them in a box and put them away. The media are just trying to sell. They're trying to sell everything to you. They're trying to sell an image, sell a dream, sell whatever. And it's easy to get swept up in that if you don't really know where your moral foundation lies. When you know authentically you, and when you're home in you, sitting in the house that is you, that's the place you need to look out at the world from and make your decisions from. Last week on the podcast, we had Adele Marker, where we talked about being mixed race, being interested in women, a near fatal accident and discovering yourself abroad. This week, we bring part two to you of the two part episode with Adele. We talk about self inquiry, looking into the darkness inside and integrity. You can take notes or you can sit back and relax or you can take us on a walk, whatever you feel is best. Enjoy the episode. I haven't spent much time with you at all since that accident, really. And it actually gave me the greatest joy to see some images of you on Instagram in Canada doing boxing. Mm -hmm. And I remember competing with you as a young person uh, in athletics, in basketball and definitely basketball is more of a team sport <laughs> but I remember once in, a, in our athletic career we had a trainer and everything I don't even know where we got that when we were that when we were that age oh, but um, he was great um, but I remember once beating you in a race one night like a hundred meter sprint and he was like Jesus Jesus Sarah you're actually you're, you're getting great you are beat better than once in about eight years but um it was such a joy to have that that time together and have that companion in sport. But then for me to see you recovered and um, back into box and stuff like that in Canada, it absolutely uh, melted my heart. And I was so grateful for all the care that you received to, to get back to that level and your own mental mental and emotional strength. So well done. Thanks. Well done and all of that. Um, is there any I'm just looking at your lovely body here is there any tattoo on your body that represents that part of your life the accident or the recovery um, I wouldn't say there's any that represents the accident or the recovery but the sleeve I got my sleeve uh, because it was when I it was I was in Canada and I had it could been a couple of years of partying, so I would have been twenty two or twenty three, maybe a bit, yeah, twenty three, and <laughs> just before I got into boxing or around the same time, and now I, I still just partying away, um, but then I had started the self inquiry. I had started trying to heal, I guess, old wounds, but I also was very drawn to the escaping and the feeling that it gave me to not be in control and to not have to look at my shit. So I knew I wouldn't be able to see a finished or an unfinished piece of art on my body and sleeves take a while and they take money. So by starting that, then I knew that it would help me to not spend money on partying, but also to re-channel my time and energy into the sports again. And at the same time, I found boxing or joined boxing so it's I think it was a an an ode to my accident it just took a couple of years to um transpire on my skin but yeah I suppose maybe it's because Ganesh is um about obstructions like placing obstructions in your way or taking them away for personal growth mm. and I think um from you know that period of my life from just before the accident to this moment was all about either dodging the obstructions or facing them and realizing stuff has to change yeah I really love the the tattoos um I feel like they're really supposed to be there like they're 
actually a part of you and the colors and everything they suit your skin so well it's just it looks like it's your arm the way it's meant to be like gorgeous <laughs> i have a question about the adolescence and the maturity then that came after as we're told it's supposed to do as a child when you're an adult you'll be mature yeah. <laughs> but you speak about um i suppose the lack of awareness or or self-inquiry when you were young, but then you were at a very, very young age, like 17, 18, around the time of the accident. So do you think that that, that wasn't the time or place for you to understand those parts of yourself during the accident or, or the aftermath of that? And then you naturally matured with age and then opened yourself up to look into those deeper wounds or traumas or do you think that was a choice and um mm, good question i think um my my home life wouldn't have been in a very um nice environment and um <clears throat> i suppose yeah like going, going to school was great like i loved school and i loved being out in my house and like um my parents would have argued a lot now and it's not their fault like they were still just people trying to do their best but at the time they'd get caught up in arguments almost on the daily so as a young child it wasn't the best to be around so and then I would have seen stuff you shouldn't really see at that age and lots of things that cause I suppose trauma or wounds inside and I think to function um, comfortably in the world, I had to put them in a box and put them away. And I don't know if I knew I was doing that, but that's what I did for many years. And I think as a teenager, if, if I had a source of maybe guidance or if I had gone to some kind of, even though I don't know if I would have trusted therapists at that age. But I think, yeah, I don't know how long it would have took me to reach into those boxes and unpack them if if I hadn't had, had um, the accident. Um, because I, you can go a long time and just leave your boxes there and not even know they're there. Because it's not like an easy task to pull them out and look at them. But yeah, maturity definitely had a space or had um, a help in choosing to look at stuff. Um, and maybe environment. I think because it wasn't until I was in Canada really that I was able to look at them. So I don't know, was it? because my environment was so far away from the one I knew and so away from people that I would be afraid to hurt or reach out to if I looked at the stuff. Um, so I think having that physical disconnect of being in another continent, or continent, it felt safe to finally unpack slowly. Um, I'm not saying Canada was all unpacking, it was a lot of partying for the first few years, but... Um, but then, yeah, I just felt in a really safe, secure space within myself and within the people around me to like finally look at this stuff slowly, slowly. Mm. And then that just begins a journey. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, I'm taking this in and we always internalise and look at ourselves. I'm thinking about my time in Australia um, yeah. and I was only there for a year, but... I know I've done a lot of self-development work in the last couple of years, Ireland and around Europe and stuff like that. But it's just interesting to think about that you were there for five years. Yeah, and then I think it takes a while to settle into a new environment and get all what you want out of your system, like the party and, and seeing the sights to settle. Um, and then you had that opening for growth. So that's just fascinating and fantastic that that happened in the way that it did. And you're in that safe space. That's beautiful. There was something that you said at the end that I wanted to ask about. Yeah, when you said you started to open the boxes and wounds to look really deep inside yourself, slowly by slowly, what was happening 
or what action were you taking? Did you see a therapist or were the people around you that you were sharing conversations with or um, was, was there tools that you were using or what started that process? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, uh, I suppose, you know, the, that be careful what you wish for is, uh, <laughs> is really true when you're somebody who, like I would have a lot of faith in my manifesting skills, especially at the time I did. I think these days I'm um, a bit, a bit, uh, I don't go to it as much as I used to, but I used to naturally just do it. So around that time, I was like, stuff needs to change, stuff needs to change. I don't know what needs to change, but something big has to happen. Something big needs to happen here. I don't know what it is. And I had <clears throat> been in Ireland just for a few months and I had found um, energy healing for the first time. And so then I went back. That opened stuff up, like my chakras and everything were even like locking because of different ways she was doing it and moving me. And then when I went back to Canada, or I tried to find a guy to learn off of, and I was looking in Ireland and it was she, this course was starting by the time I was going back to Canada. And then she was like, oh, the main guy who is Irish, but he does it in Vancouver. I was like, what? So I contacted him anyway, and I did like a level one with him. <clears throat> and that would have been just before the summer. And that like really just cracked open the like the vault that we lock ourselves in sometimes and think it's all okay it was like simple questions that now I'm so, I probably it's been so it's 10 years ago so now these questions to me are just like oh yeah whatever but it's like things like what was what's the the biggest fear the thing that you keep you like holds you back the most from getting to a or getting to B, like little tiny questions like that or what can you what's the one thing you need to do now to become the truer version of you like small little questions that I'd never answered before so that was slowly like start putting the codes in the vault and open it and really like uh, shined a light on more how much I want to change but also how much I don't know how and I be, by change I mean I think I was just looking to find me I don't think now when I look back it wasn't to change it was to come home but I think when you're there you're like I need to change but it's not it's to drop all your layers and shed all your bullshit and come home and just be you because we spend so many years running away from us when it's feeling like home is like inside is traumatic or a painful place or a sad place to be you just want to be anywhere but it but really cha true change is when you finally come home to yourself and you feel safe sitting in your own body being with you like your body soul and mind and I was just like okay I need to change I need to change what I need to change but I wasn't asking what to, what am I going to do or this is how I'm going to change and then that summer sure I was still on the party train and I love festivals so I'd booked like three in and at the first festival, and at the time, yeah, I, I took some mind altering stuff. And at the first festival, I basically was faced with, like, uh, it's almost like my mind cracked open or my my skeleton closets cracked open. And I met some skeletons in my closet that even other people, or uh, even I would have told nobody or shared with anybody, but I was faced with looking at that. So like the dark room analogy again it was like little lights were being switched on within my being of me and I was forced to look at it so it was almost like a forcedness it wasn't like I'm gonna do this it was like you can't you, like you have to you can't ignore this anymore you can't pretend this mm -hmm. stuff isn't here and then the next festival I met like again it was like to do it like the energy work I met somebody and he was doing like an energy thing on me and again I felt so like just connected to I suppose the ground and my body and I hadn't felt that for a while but then I went to um, uh, the third festival and it was Burning Man and that's a big one and yeah basically what happened at the first one happened at the third one where my mind totally unfolded and exploded and I think I mean explosion because it was so intense but everywhere I turned I was faced with like looking at 
versions of me or or pieces of me that maybe before I was afraid to look at or mm. ashamed of or um didn't even know was there and it just wasn't a nice ex- like it wasn't like a lovely experience this was it was actually quite traumatic and it <clears throat> it could be like a thing called like spiritual emergence it could be a aggressive kundalini awakening or it could be psychosis like there's <laughs> they're very much on the line mm-hmm. like what I experienced but the the only the thing that leads me to think it was a spiritual emergence from everything I've learned about that or, or an aggressive kundalini awakening is because I left there and I realized so much about myself and my inner demons and all the things that I needed to look at and work with. Like the lights in my house were switched on bright and I was walking around in it and I was like, what the fuck is all this stuff? Oh my God. And it felt like a switch was put on in me in my body and my mind and my soul and my spirit. It literally felt like somebody put on a light switch and I was here I was finished from I wasn't in autopilot anymore Mm. I had like definitely wearing the hat and definitely had the hands on the wheel and it was terrifying but what followed suit was a hyper accelerated deep dive into my stuff into me into learning about all these new things and ways of healing and Talk, yeah, I use talk therapy. Um, I use like energy healing. I any and the boxing, the boxing is therapy in itself as well. I just start reading obsessively about self help things, looking at self help videos, movies, like like following like on the internet, like um, people who have made giant changes in their life after they realize they were in autopilot basically and yeah it was just so accelerated I surrounded myself with people who were Mm. committed to doing this as well and yeah it's almost like the universe went just put the wind behind me and allowed me to roll with it like Adele how would you describe who you are let's say in the darkness and then who you were when the light was switched on Mm. Um, to uh, outsiders I would have been um, when I was in the darkness probably people thought I was really happy and um, really carefree and life came easy to me but I think even to me I had myself convinced at that time that I was a very happy person I had no idea I had this like deep sadness that I had never looked at or that I have, I've always chosen to ignore which was like which is like your, my inner child I, I tried to disconnect from because that was painful um so yeah but then who I would like that person to me in the dark was like the, me Adele like in the darkness is like I was just so, especially with alcohol and stuff, I could be really, um, like, ignorant with people's feelings and emotions and self, like, like, yeah, self gratification or like instant gratification was stuff I followed. Um, Selfish. I was super selfish. Um, And just not present just always chasing the next thing to help me to feel anything but me Mm. um and then when I feel like I was switched on it just feels like I landed (laughs) like Mm -hmm. like bam in my body on on the on the earth like totally here and because I'm now listening to myself and I listen to the world I guess I I feel like I'm able to be more present and listening for other people and I mean listen to the world as in like really listen not to like news or media or any of that but like like feel what's going on around you because I noticed since we sat down 
you have a little one word tattoo on your wrist that says integrity and that's a that's a word that's come up for me in the last couple of years one of the programs I did with Landmark I think part of their course was about integrity with yourself yeah. and simply they spoke about it being are you what you're saying you are like mm. mean what you say say what you mean and and do that yes. um where does integrity come into play with the light that you are mm. well it was actually after that first burning man festival when we were back in the hotel it's called decompression and thank god everything had calmed and the skeletons <laughs> were I knew the skeletons were there with, but they went back in the closet and it wasn't scary and it was like almost like joyous because it was a celebration of having met them but it was a celebration okay now it's not going to be that intense like everything's calmed and I bumped into a girl that I had bumped into at the two other festivals before and I had tried to find her on Facebook but I couldn't find her and all of a sudden we just bumped into each other and she just ran into my arms and hugged me <laughs> and she said to me, say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, but it was one of those things like, do you, it was the, sometimes I get stuff said to me by a person or a, med- a medium of communication or oh. anything. But like it could be from a, something I read or something I look at or something I listen to or a physical person say something and it'll be like the universe will be like, take this in, this is like... This is like, this means that, man, it was one of those moments. So I think, yeah, before that, I don't know if I had been a person of integrity. Um, And still right now, I can't say I'm fully in my integrity, but I'm trying. And that's the thing. And that's why I have the tattoo there is to remind me because um, I dated someone before a very, a very special person who's no longer here. And um, she lived entirely in integrity and it was just like amazing to watch um really amazing and I think if we're all at least trying to be more integral with like by who we are and also by what we say like our act like if we say we're going to do something if we can do it but that's still a challenge for me like I have my moments where I'm um a rebel and resistant to you know say I'll go go for a run in the morning and then you don't but but it is I think it is a muscle I think Mm. when integrity when it comes to action I think is a muscle you need to practice um but integrity when it comes to who you are and if who you are being who you say you are I think that's comes with healing and reflection and really yeah, turning the lights on in your house and looking at it and being okay with that. It doesn't mean you're a perfect person. It just means that you see yourself and you like what you see and it's okay for you to share that with the world because you feel safe to do so and confident and grounded in in you. And like, I, th- I don't think, I think some people don't have that, um, can't be that integral with their being because sometimes fear or trauma or stuff does block that as well but for some people it is a choice and then for some people it's just ignorance so yeah again journeys are different the different journeys yeah i love how you describe all that it's it's actually really healing to listen to and a couple of conversations ago you described the healing journey um and it's similar to what we say in reconnective healing it's about coming home to who you really are it's about being your true nature like I a lot of times we just deny that like and we're trying to be something else or something traumatic happened and then we made up this story that it's not safe to be us Mm -hmm. and then we turn into somebody else but um I think that really ties in really good with integrity as well like you're being in integrity with who you really are, your true nature, like so. Um, loved listening to that whole explanation. It's mm. very, very good. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, and I know we've only got a glimpse, one little chapter of the great life that you've lived, Adele, and all that you've done for yourself as an example for the rest of us to be in integrity with ourselves and our lives. And that has been so gorgeous and so beautiful to listen to. I really admire you for having the courage to share all of that. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. 
And I have one last question for you, and it's for the young people of the world. Um, is there any one piece of advice or wisdom that you'd give to someone that, whether they have a bad background, mm. home life, they've been bullied in school, or the young people of the world that haven't had it easy and they're stepping out into the greater world that is um, going to college or getting your first job and um, navigating that from not a place of, of safety or knowing yourself? Great question. Um, I think the most... Um, how you can navigate the world the best is when you know how to navigate yourself first. And that doesn't mean just uh, knowing what you're into or what you know what you want to do in life. It means delving inside and yeah, figuring out who you are, what what are your values, what what are your needs in life, like what 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 are your what's like what do you want to bring to this world and what do you want to experience in this world and not just from a logical point of view but from your soul from your being from your heart um because if you're if you're informed from yourself with those inquiries from yourself then your foundation starts with you. It doesn't start with what... Like, the media are just trying to sell. They're trying to sell everything to you. They're trying to sell an image, sell a dream, sell whatever. And it's easy to get swap, swept up in that if you don't really know where your moral foundation lies. And where, when you know, like, authentically... Authentically. I don't know why I can't say that word anymore without being, like, authentic. <laughs> When you know authentically you and when you're home in you, sitting in the house that is you, that's the place you need to look out at the world from and make your decisions from, not searching for answers outside of yourself. Which I think I would have been guilty of doing when I was a young person going into the world, coming from a place of not feeling safe because inside me wasn't safe. So... It's to find that safety and security within yourself. And then from there you can figure out the deeper answers that that will help you navigate the world better, which is like the biggest one is finding out what are your your morals, your values. Like if you can narrow that down to five things and just when you think about making a decision or changes in your life, look at look at that foundation of the five morals, values you've collected like is it you know it could be something like um integrity yeah integrity is one of them could be something like integrity playfulness uh truth um you know if you're if truth is one of your values and morals and you've you've um highlighted that for yourself you're not going to put up with somebody who's a bullshitter or or going to places that you can see is just surface and crap. Like you're gonna, it's it's gonna cause you to check yourself and to really like, really, uh, and ask yourself more questions and see what it is you really want or what, you know, where else you can find that. Yeah, that's a bit long winded. But... <sighs> Thanks for ending that. And ending the conversation so wise, wisely and so gracefully, Adele. I love that we ended with a question for people to ask themselves and for an example of the values that does need to be heard. And I know a lot of people aren't living from that space. So thanks for this contribution and all that you are in this moment. It's been, it's been fab. Thanks for being here. Thanks, girls. You were great. Yeah, Adele, thanks so much. I'm so happy that all those lights came on and just pinged and you had your <laughs> spiritual emergence and now you're just sharing your light with everybody. And 
we didn't really speak much about the work that you're doing with in the world, but you're helping young people and um I just know everyone's life you're gonna to touch now is just gonna be amazing through exercise and yoga and all the community work that you're doing. So keep shining. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me, girls. Really really lovely interview and thanks for your work sharing and shining a light on other people and what they're doing much appreciated much appreciated <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in to another episode of our partners in positivity podcast it means the world to us that you've tuned in we hope we put a smile in your face or made you laugh maybe you got a little bit of wisdom from this or hopefully you want to take an action in your life based on something positive you got from listening to our guest or listening to us. We absolutely, absolutely value the work that we do and we are going to continue to bring you more episodes week on week. If you don't know already, we do have a Kofi donation page and it is ko-fi.com forward slash partners and positivity, kofi.com. Feel free to donate and we are so grateful for anyone that has donated so far. Thanks, Sarah. And thanks to each and every one of you who tune in uh, on audio and on YouTube to listen to us, to share all your good energy with us. And thanks for everything that you've done, whether it's a like on Instagram, sharing the podcast, nice comment, a review, coming and meeting us in person on our PMP hikes. We just love it all and we are so grateful and we cherish and adore each and every one of you. Thanks so much.